This is Windows 10. And if you have a copy of Windows 8 or 8.1 running on your computer, then you're actually entitled to a free upgrade to Windows 10, as long as you grab it before July 29th, 2016. Now honestly, I think this is the best version of Windows ever released, but why is that? I'm Jay Cook, and these are the major changes from Windows 8 to 10. First off, Windows 10 just looks really pretty to me. I like the new modern clean design that they've gone with, and all the stuff I really didn't like from Windows 8 is more or less gone, with some of the cool features mixed in with some of the cool features from Windows 7 to make a really nice package that looks good and is really quite functional. Plus, Windows 10 is even more customizable than Windows 8, so anything you do like or don't like, you can always get rid of, add more of, change things to feel like your own computer and be the way you want it to be. So most of you will actually be really glad to know that the start menu is back in kind of an old form in a weird way, but it's also got some of the mixed metro stuff from Windows 8, which you can customize just like you did in Windows 8, but you can also get rid of if you want to just by clicking, oops, and dragging here and making things smaller, shorter, all that sort of good stuff. But also the new additional stuff is the search bar is back from Windows 7 and if you've never used that before then it's a really really efficient way of just pressing the Windows key and typing in whatever you want and it's probably going to come up even if it's not the right name or something or stuff like that. It's really powerful plus it's now integrated with Cortana which we'll get into in a little bit. Now all your most commonly used applications are over here and all your file sort of settings and places is what it's known as is down in here. Now something cool to note is that Windows apps don't suck anymore. They literally don't suck. Look at this. It now runs in the desktop environment so we don't have everything switching in thirds and taking up the entire screen anymore and it runs just a lot. Basically they just don't suck anymore and it's really nice change. Now assuming as we're talking about the apps, we you go into the Windows Store which has also had some significant improvements. It's now a unified store which means if you've had any problems with the Windows Store before you probably don't have the same problems now because everything that you buy is now tied to your Microsoft or Windows account. So if you buy something on here like a, a premium Twitter app or a movie or Minecraft or a game or something like that then you'll be able to play the game on here but you'll also just be able to go to the store on your mobile or your tablet and download it there for no additional cost because it's tied to your account. This also works with films and music so if you download or rent something like Ex Machina on your phone on the way home from a train journey or something like that then once you get back in then you can start resuming to watch it again because it's all connected to your account. Windows 10 also now introduces a notification center which acts very similarly to what you'll be used to on a smartphone with the notification center being at the top. Now any notifications that you miss or dismiss will be placed in this little section which will actually sync across different devices so if you've got a Windows phone all the notifications will be synced up through here or at least some of them will be. And down by here you can see a bunch of settings that you can customize and something that Windows 7 upgrade people will not appreciate is the new settings app which is just so much cleaner, so much nicer than anything we've been dealing with in Windows 8. And again, this is where you can find all the customization settings and some quick features that you can do by here is change the start menu so it's back to what we're used to in Windows 8 if that's what you actually enjoy instead of the Windows 7 style sort of menu. Now I'm going to sound really nerdy when I say this but my favourite two new features really improve productivity on your computer and it's a uh, task view and new snap settings. So first off task view. You can get to that by swiping through the left of the screen if you're on a tablet or using a tablet on your computer or you can use get to it by pressing task view down by here or on your keyboard windows tab and you don't have to hold it down you can just press it and everything's okay. So what this does in the middle of the screen it's going to bring up all the applications and programs you have running on your desktop. So from here you can easily switch between or bring up a program to the front or if you want to, you can actually close down these things and switch to thingy. You can also drag these across into different virtual desktops, which we'll get into now. So desktops are literally my new favorite feature. And they allow you to have separate blank slates for all your 
work basically. So you can keep things separate if you want to, or just bring them on to a different desktop and keep them out of the way. So my favorite thing about so my favorite thing I do with this is keep all my university work, all my separate projects, and all my entertainment all on different pages. So when I want to be doing something on my projects, switch over to the desktop three or something like that, and everything will be separate. Or if I want to do my work, I'll be going to desktop one doing that. If I want to go on Twitter or Reddit or Facebook or something like that, all my entertainment and distraction stuff will all be on desktop two. So I don't have to worry about switching between things and getting distracted when I don't want to be distracted. It's a really great feature for functionality and productivity. So if we go into desktop three now, let's talk about the new snapping features just by showing them off. So if you snap an app or a program, Microsoft now notices or realizes that when you snap something that you probably want to snap something next to it again and it brings up a little snap assist thing that looks very similar to the task view when you use that but off to the side. So now if we click on File Explorer that's going to bring that up and snap it into the thing. So you can just easily select things through there and it's a really quick way of doing things but also you can now put things into quads. So now you can put things into four things. So you can have one, two, three, four things around your screen. And also, just like in the task view, you can close things down. You don't want to open them up through here. So what is this? This is Microsoft Edge. Microsoft Edge is basically the replacement for Internet Explorer, which still exists for some reason on your computer, but I really do suggest not using that. This is because Microsoft Edge is supposed to be a really good replacement for Firefox and Chrome. And by all accounts, it's been fairly decent so far. Plus, it has some extra built-in features that neither of those two browsers do actually have. First off, we want to show off something called Reading View. So we'll click on this rather depressing news article. And as you can see, there's a lot of adverts in the sides. There's more links to different things and comments and sharing. It's all a bit messy, and if you get distracted a lot, then you probably don't want to be doing these things. So, Microsoft has built in something called Reading View, which you can just click, and it literally gets rid of all the stuff you probably don't want to see, and kind of gives you the bare bones web page, and it brings up just the picture, the headline in this case, and then the rest of the article. Sometimes there's more pictures, if there's been more pictures included in the article, but basically it picks all the stuff that you don't want to see and gets rid of it. The second big thing about Microsoft Edge is the ability to use a web page as kind of like a like a little drawing pad so you can draw on it and make notes and say jokes I didn't even read that that could be very appropriate or stuff like this or if you want to you can just highlight quotes and things like that you can have a few different ways of finding this useful but you can always save these you can also share them with other people and it's just a neat little feature that some people may find useful, some people may actually not. And the other big thing is that you can save things to a reading list so you can read them all later. So now we're going to talk about Cortana, which also has some integration with Cortana with Microsoft Edge. As you can see, this little thing here is part of Cortana giving this information. So we've mentioned Cortana at least twice in this video, so who is Cortana? Cortana is me. There we go. Cortana is kind of being advertised as the world's only personal digital assistant, which is a bit of a weird way of thinking about it. But if you're used to Siri or Google Voice, then you should be kind of familiar with the concept of controlling your devices through your voice. So Cortana has got like a lot of features that you can do with and she knows a lot of functionality but a lot of the stuff is built in with Microsoft products like the Edge, the search bar, uh, you can email people through her, you can set reminders on your Microsoft calendars and all this stuff and she's just a really weird cool way of doing things and you should probably play around with her because you can do a bunch of weird things like set reminders and talk to you about certain things. So if you're into gaming at all, you might want to check out the new Xbox app, which really does a pretty good job of mixing up and building a bridge between your Xbox life and your PC life. Uh, it's got some cool little features in here. You can see all your friends and what they're doing. You can look at their videos and stuff. One of the coolest features, if you have an Xbox One, is the ability to play 
your Xbox One through your PC by streaming it to your actual computer as long as you're on the same network, which is a pretty neat feature. But outside of the Xbox sort of ecosystem, there's also some other cool features that you can use with Steam games and things like that. So when you're in a game, like uh, Minecraft in this example, you can press Windows G, which should, there you go, bring up a little gaming menu, which has some cool features, wasn't on that, which lets you do some really cool things, like take screenshots, which you can also do. I got some other settings here, but one of the cool things is it lets you record video for the next 30 seconds. So what are you doing, whether it's Team Fortress 2 or anything like that, League of Legends, you can record whatever you're doing and everything will be recorded and you can actually see some old footage saved in your Xbox app which you can then share with whoever you want. DirectX, DirectX 12 is also introduced and exclusive to Windows 10 machines at the moment which if compatible with your hardware means that your games may end up running a little bit better just through some software updates on both your higher end computers and like your low end laptops. So those are really all the major changes from Windows 8 to Windows 10. Most of the other things are done under the hood, things like Continuum, a better command prompt, security and some other things. You can see exactly what's new in Windows 10 by looking at the Wikipedia link I have just below the like button. Uh, if you didn't like this video, could you please leave some constructive criticism in the comments below? I would really appreciate it. I'm trying to get back into this and I've spent literally seven hours doing this and my voice is starting to really hurt. So I really appreciate some feedback on this. And if you do like this video, please click that like button. I would really appreciate it. And I'd also love if you shared this video or the Windows 7 version around in any which way you can. Thanks for watching. I've been Jay Cork. Out.